Hello everyone, welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. Yes, I'm at the hospital waiting for my father-in-law surgery, but I feel like we need to clarify this. There are some internet rumors that the red heifers that are currently in Israel were genetically modified. Let's, let's clarify that, let's dig a little deeper. And around 2015 to 2018, Israel did try right here it says it to actually genetically modify to pull these perfect red heifers it didn't work the red heifers that are currently in israel come from a christian evangelist out of texas if it's your will give us a red heifer yeah so we got back in his ranger and we drove down through the brush and Lo and behold, there was a beautiful red heifer had just been born, wow. laying at the feet of its mother, wow. right there waiting on us. Wow. It was absolutely incredible. And, and we believe these are signs that the Lord is giving the church, because the Bible says first the natural, and then the spiritual. And I believe that is what's happening right Amen. now. The Bible does not say the tree was cut down. No. It says we have been engrafted into that tree. Amen. So because we're engrafted in, it means that tree is still there, which yeah. they are the fathers, Paul say, of that tree. Amen. And here you are now, that God would use you and, and put a, a love between you and the nation of Israel to bring those red heifers there, to tell them. We love you. We love you. That's what it's about. We want to work with you. He prayed to God and asked him to help him breed a perfect red heifer, which is the first time in 2000 years since Jesus died on the cross that this has happened. So the current red heifers that are in Israel are not genetically modified. These are perfect, blemish-free, naturally bred, and they were shipped to Israel as pets. All right, to get them through customs. They didn't have the ear punch and all of that because they couldn't have any, any blankets on them, no holes on them, anything like that, okay? They had to be perfect. They had to, to meet the requirements for the priest. These will not be sacrificed like people are assuming, like they're gonna walk up there, slit the cow's throat on, you know, a big <laughs> altar to God. That's not what they need these cows for. They need them so that the priest can be purified from the ashes once they burn the red heifer along with hyssop and some red scarlet cloth that they have recently learned how to make like their ancestors did. So just so you guys know, you can't believe everything you're hearing from people all over the internet. You need to dig deeper. The reason it's a big deal is this is the first time in 2000 years, okay? In all of known history, there has only been nine previous perfect red heifers, and now there are three. So nine for all of human history, and at one time there are three. Still at that perfect age for slaughtering. They have to be a certain age to be butchered, all right, for this to happen so they can make the ashes the heifers have to be a certain age they all three just hit that age originally i think they hit sent five two have been excluded so now there are like three still standing that can meet the requirements for the priest think about the perfect number three father the son the father the spirit father jesus okay and the son the father and the holy spirit is what I'm getting at. It's a perfect number. So I want you guys to understand you're going to have to dig a little bit deeper when you're getting into this. We've done multiple videos on the red heifers. I advise you to go out and look, but these are not genetically modified red heifers. I know Wikipedia wants you to believe that, but they're not. They tried it and they failed. What you're looking at are three naturally born heifers from a Christian shipped to Israel as a pet. They're not gonna be slaughtered in an animal sacrifice. That is not what this is. This is part of a cleansing ritual so that the priest can enter in the Holy of Holies. Now we as Christians understand you don't need to do that anymore. The veil was ripped. When Jesus died on that cross, when he gave up his ghost, 
he allowed that veil to be ripped and anybody filled with the Holy Spirit can walk into the courts of the living God and, and, you know, go boldly into the throne room. You can do that for yourself. You don't need a priest. You don't need a preacher. You don't need any of those people. You yourself can get saved by saying one simple prayer. And it goes like this. All you have to do is say it out loud and believe it in your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask Jesus into my heart. I ask him to forgive me for my sins. I ask him to renew me, remake me, and turn me into him. Create a new creature in me, a new creation. Father, I believe that he died on the cross. He was buried in the tomb and that he rose from the dead three days later. And that he now sits at your right hand and I await his return for the day that he will call me up to heaven with you. I am now saved, forgiven, and I will spend eternity in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. Now go join a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church. They will walk you through baptism and anything else that you need done, folks. But don't make this out to be some that it's not, okay? Just don't don't go there. Don't, don't be those people. Put your faith in Jesus. Understand what we're dealing with right now. We're moving into the end times. It's a beautiful time to be alive. You guys know I'm at the hospital waiting for my father-in-law to go through major surgery. He's in surgical ICU. Just got fitted for the dentures. Told you guys earlier, my husband is literally under a spiritual attack. Our dog is in definite pain. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. He'll be at the, the vet's office first thing in the morning with a big hefty bill to go with it because I'm not going to let him suffer. I do all my own treatments and stuff at home, but when your animal's in so much pain that he growled and nipped at his daddy and then looked absolutely pathetic afterwards, you take your dog to the vet. Tomorrow is the first time that they could fit him in. They had to boot other people out because they have to sedate him to get him still enough to see what's going on with the hip and the knee. Personally, we think that he sleeps on his back. We think he may have caught his foot in something. And when he rolled, he may have snapped that hip out of place or the knee out of place. Whatever it is, I will keep you updated. God bless you. No worries, you guys. God has got us. He's got a plan. He has a purpose for you. Get outside. Get up. Get something done. No excuses, folks. We're moving into the end times. So uh, if you'd like to support what we do here at Storky Farmstead, I will drop that way. At the top of comments, you guys who blessed, we got to get back inside and check my father-in-law.